Welcome to the Pickle Barrel Fantasy Football Podcast, September 21st, 2016. I'm Andy. I'm Frank. We got our week three preview for us. Uh, we're going to go through every single matchup that we got this week. But first, we'd like to honor some of our favorite fallen heroes. <laughs> AP, Adrian Peterson, out for at least eight weeks. Amir Abdullah, out for at least eight weeks. Corey Coleman, broken hand, we're not sure. Jay Stu, who's going to miss him anyway. And of course, the incredible Danny Woodhead, out with an ACL sprain, or ACL pass for the entire year. <laughs> Goodbye to all fallen heroes. Another fucking terrible injury from the week. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was the worst week that I can remember in a long time. Well, we thought last week was terrible. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, all those names, I mean, wow. I mean, I didn't even say all of them. I mean, it, yeah, it was pretty amazing. <laughs> I'm actually pretty psyched on all the injuries so far because they have failed to hit me and they've actually helped me in a lot of ways yeah. but yeah uh, it's rough <laughs> i lost amir abdullah i was very excited about him especially after that week one where he he just looked really good but uh, unfortunately he's going to be gone for at least eight weeks um if not longer yeah i think uh moncrief is out too for four yes, to six weeks moncrief with a dislocated shoulder yeah something and, like that and uh yes unfortunately he is gone as well um, so, so many injuries and so much to get to. Um, like I said, we're going to be showing you every single matchup. Um, so, let's hop right into it. Yeah. Let's not waste any time. Exactly. Thursday night, tomorrow night? Yes. Houston versus New England. I'm looking forward to this one. I think we're finally going to have a good game on yeah. our hands. I really <laughs> hope so. Uh, okay. So, how do we feel about New England's wide receivers? Um, it's it's rough. I guess you, you got to start Edelman. Mm-hmm. Um possibility of him coming in as emergency QB. Yeah, he could throw a couple QB pa- Apparently, passes. there's some rumors that they also came up with some packages specifically for him, so they might just throw him in a, in a few times even if the uh, backup backup quarterback does, doesn't get hurt, so that, that could be exciting. Them. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I did hear that um, actually uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is... He, is He'll suit up. Yeah, he's going to suit up. He's practicing this week. He's, his shoulder's a little beat up, but he could play, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I guess if they need to hand off the ball, but the, other than Edelman, I'm not really playing yeah. Hogan or Amendola and Gronk. Still a big old question mark. Probably not going to come back until... They're 100% sure on him. He's just too important to the team. Yeah, exactly. And I guess that leaves you with just your uh, running backs probably. And I still think it's probably just the blunt show. It's just simple and easy. Yep. I mean, right now it's looking like they're going to lean on him to just go ahead and be the the bulldozer that they know he can be. And that's that's exactly what they need to do. I actually, I mean, just as far as how the game is going to go, I think Houston's going to win this game. I, I just think, think there's too many questions at this point on New England's team. I'd be surprised if, if they didn't, honestly. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous if Houston pulls off another win like this. Or, yeah. or uh, New England, New England I mean. Say, yeah. uh, everybody picking against them the last couple games, so who knows. That's true. All right, what about Will Fuller? Are we starting Will Fuller and Brock Osweiler? I think you probably got to. He's yeah. playing really well. He's getting a lot of catches. Got two, two games over 100 yards. First player to do that since Deshaun Jackson. That's what I heard, too, yeah. yeah. That's fucking awesome. So that's awesome. impressive. And, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I would start him for sure. Easily flex-worthy. Yeah, I definitely. Um, wide receiver three, even. Uh, and then Brock Osweiler, I feel like, pretty good flyer. Yeah, definitely. It'd be a, it's a good game if you if you got uh, if you don't have much depth at QB and you got to play him, play him. Yeah, I'm uh, him. kind of flip-flopping right now between Winston, Osweiler, Flacco, and even a little Dak Prescott trying to think if I want to pick up somebody to supplement uh, James Winston this week. But yeah. we'll get to that. All right, next, next matchup, we got Washington versus the New York Giants. Well, the Giants' defense is looking good, so I don't think there's a lot on Washington you really want to play. Yeah, I would not play Kirk Cousins. I would just drop him if I were you. <laughs> I have zero faith in Kirk Cousins. I, I I can understand that. I don't think he's completely terrible, but yeah, I mean it's I mean it's it, it's not looking. He has had a lot of amazing. passing yards. I mean, he might he be has. a garbage time uh, garbage time guy if that's how you want to run your team. Yeah. <laughs> and who's the other guy we got? Uh, uh, Matt Jones, Golden. yay or nay? Matt Jones. I, I say nay. I say nay, too. He got a touchdown last week, which means he's probably going to go without a touchdown for the next yeah. couple of weeks. <laughs> and the New York Giants run defense is looking pretty okay right yeah. now. Yeah, no, definitely. So I, I agree with you. How about uh, playing the New York Giants defense? Though? I've got Eli in one of my leagues, and so I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to play him. I don't think Washington defenses look that scary. Dak did well against them. Roethlisberger yeah. did well against them. So I think Eli should be fine. Eli's going to, yeah. I think yeah. Eli's going to have a monster game. Um, if not a monster game, a solid game. Of course, he didn't last. Well, he had a lot of yards last week, but no touchdowns, so that sucked. But um, And then I think, what, the receivers, you're probably 
probably can play all three of them. You probably can. I mean, I mean, if you're kind of you know looking for not even really a flyer, but I mean, is is Cruz flex worthy this year? I don't. I mean, it's this, starting this to look that way. I guess everybody. It seems like everybody's not really trusting him much, but he, he got a touchdown last week. He may be a touchdown dependent flex, where if you you play him and he gets a touchdown, you're looking pretty good because he's got about seven yards to back it up. Yeah. Um, but I think that's about what you can expect from him week to week, as long as his matchups aren't too bad. It's about you know. Four to four to six catches, seventy to eighty yards, maybe a touchdown, guess. maybe not. Yeah, and then I guess you're obviously starting ODB, but it does suck that he doesn't yeah. have a TD yet. He has not done much. Yeah, ODB no TD. And yep. uh, what about old Shane Vereen? I think he's maybe worthy of a flex play as well. I think so too, especially if Rashad Jennings doesn't play. I think I think you should absolutely play. But him. shout out to our buddy Ian Harris who <laughs> oh, yeah. spent twenty five dollars on the waiver wire on Shane Vereen. Yeah. I was the only other person to bid on him. Of course, I bid a fat zero, as you say. <laughs> uh, we had a couple of those this, week, this yeah. year where just no one bid anything, and then people just like paid like at least 20 bucks. I know. I paid $21 for Antonio Gates. No, no one, one else bid. bid <laughs> so fucking pissed. <laughs> but, yeah, no. So what Ian did basically with Shane Vereen, just, just so you know, he traded his second pick overall. To get Adrian Peterson, who's now out, yeah, and then he and he got he got thirty three dollars for that in, return, in, in yeah. return, fab dollars. So really, what he did was he traded ODB for AP, and then spent all the money he got on that trade for <laughs> Shane Reed. Yeah, all, all of it by eight bucks. Yeah, <laughs> for Shane Reed. So good on you, Ian. Thank you for yeah. wasting your money. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yes. you. That's a, that's our champion making moves like yep, that. Yeah, that's our champ right there. The <laughs> one who stashed. David Johnson all year. Oh, I believed in him. <laughs> all right. Baltimore versus Jacksonville. Uh, Joe and Joe Flacco. I think it's a good, good play. Yeah. Right no, now. I think so too. I think this could this could potentially be a pretty high scoring game. It I could mean, be. I, I think mean, they I, can definitely play with each other. Yeah, I think I think and they're both kind of kind of a similarly built team where, you know, their run game isn't all that explosive. Uh, you know, TJ Yeldon and Chris Ivory for Jacksonville and then yeah. The stable of unimpressive backs in, in Baltimore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I, I think it's great for, for Mike Wallace. I think it's great for Allen Robinson and Allen Hearns. I think you're starting all those pass catchers and you're avoiding the backfields. I, I think you're exactly right with that. I will say, though, do watch Ivory because if he plays, we'll see his first game as a Jaguar. And yeah, he might he might be good. Some people might have already dropped him in your leagues because I mean he hasn't done shit so far. Yeah. So you know we'll see. He he might be out there for you, and he might be worth it eventually. Yeah, I would I would definitely keep an eye on Ivory because T.J. Yeldon has been trash Yeldon mm-hmm. and has not been able to do a damn thing uh, when given the opportunities to do so. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, definitely keep an eye on him. And we also what Ivory did last year. He was he was a a top ten back. I'm pretty sure he was great last year. Yes, he was. All right, moving on. We got a uh, Cleveland versus Miami. So another quarterback where like I could throw him in there, Tannehill. Yeah, and he's probably, played well. Probably be fine against that uh, loose, shall we call it, Cleveland secondary. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, they should. It should be. Uh, there should be a lot of points to be had for Miami. Yeah, and I know you picked up their defense. I did. That's kind of a sneaky play. I mean, I think Cleveland this year is that de- is that offense that's just like, nah, I'll play whoever's playing them. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> my my philosophy with it was basically most of the time this tends to work, but. If you can pick up a defense that's going to play a rookie quarterback, especially his first game ever, this Cody Kessler kid, I, I mean, I think the odds have got to be in my favor. I could, maybe the kid's going to do real well and fuck him up, and it'll yeah. suck, and I'll regret it. But at the same time, he should he should turn the ball over a little bit. And, yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. So I think on the Miami side, you're you're considering playing Tannehill as a flyer. You're probably, if you can, if you need a defense, you're playing Miami. You're definitely playing Landry. But other than that. I mean, there's not anybody I'm particularly excited about. Yeah, you'd Devontae play Parker, maybe. Yeah, you play, maybe play Parker if you if you got to. Um, he did well last week on yeah on the Miami side. <clears throat> That's about it. You don't want to touch the backfield. Arians out. No, JJ or um, what's that other guy's name? Kenyon Drake. Yeah, Kenyon I'm not Drake, interested yeah. in either of those guys. No, thanks. On the Cleveland side of the ball, I think there's only two options you got to play. Exactly. Crowell, and uh, who's looking like a solid RB2 for the rest of the year. Yeah, he's looking good. And uh, Pryor Sr., Terrell Pryor Sr. Yeah. If you haven't noticed, all these uh, NFL players have started to put Sr. on their name. I don't know when this became a thing. Like, you know, 
you're, if you're the first guy, you're just the first guy. You're like, if you're Marvin Jones <laughs> Jr., okay, that means you had a Marvin Jones. And how are you? You didn't have a Marvin Jones Sr. Yeah, exactly. Steve Smith, what have you started? I know. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I th- I noticed it after RG3 came to the league. Maybe that had something to do yeah. with it. I don't know. Yeah, we got Will the fifth. We got all these guys that are Does easy. he have a five on the back of his? Yeah, he has Really? A I, I've never Ford. noticed yeah, that. Yeah, wow. Yeah, V. Oh, interesting, yeah. <laughs> all right, moving on to Minnesota versus Carolina. All right, so Carolina, we pretty much agreed. You're starting all of your pass catchers. Yeah. And you're starting Cam Newton, obviously. The yeah. question is the backfield. I, I, Whitaker versus Cameron Arts Payne. I'd probably avoid it. Maybe if, 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 you're, it, yeah. if you're looking real low at running back, pick up Payne, see if mm-hmm. he maybe – Something happens with him and he's See, looking good. But. I, I've thought just because, and maybe this is just recency bias, that Fozzie Whitaker was the one who had over 100 yards last week. So I would go Fozzie. Uh, not that either one of those is particularly interesting because I already hate Jonathan Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, this is a bad team to have a running back on because Cam Newton's a quarterback and he steals yeah. so much. But, I mean, with Cameron Artis Payne, I, mean, it's, I don't know much about him. I haven't watched him play much, but I do know it's his only second year in the league, so maybe. Yeah. I know yeah. Fozzie's been around for a while. So Fozzie has been around for a while. I'm not excited about either one of those either. I would say avoid it if you can, if you got to yeah. play one of them. I personally would go with Fozzie Whitaker. Um, but like I said, you're really going to make your bread and butter off the pass catchers in this game. Yeah. Calvin Benjamin, Greg Olson, maybe even a little Ted Ginn Jr. I picked him up. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. We'll see. Yeah. Um, and then for Minnesota, uh, Stefan Diggs is a must start. <laughs> He's the number one receiver in fantasy football right now. Yeah. And nothing to really show you why he would slow down right now. I mean, he the favorite target of Sam Bradford, so they finally got someone who can pass the ball yeah. in Minnesota. Um, but, of course, we cannot talk about this game without the uh, exit of one Adrian Peterson. Yep, yep, yep. AP. I guess you got their two running backs that are that are coming in. You got Jared McKenna and you got uh, Matt yeah, Asiata. Asiata. Yeah. But you're probably not starting either of them this week. I mean, you kind of, with that, you know, I know that Matt Asiata was the better fantasy play in 2014 when AP went down. Yeah. But you kind of got to understand that, that was Jarek McKinnon's rookie year. Yeah, exactly. We don't really know anything about what is going to happen in that backfield. I would say Jarek McKinnon's a guy I'm leaning towards for the rest of the time AP's out. I don't know, maybe, you know, Jared, maybe Matt Asiata has another blowout year where he has a bunch of touchdowns. Maybe. Maybe they give him all the fucking goal line touches yeah. again. Yeah. It's it's hard to say, but uh, just wanted to just watch this game this week and yeah. see so, what I it mean, looks you know, like. I'm not saying drop either one of those. Yeah, yeah, them up, yeah, but yeah, no. stash them and see how they do. I did drop Mass- Matt Asiata once I heard Corey Coleman went out the broken hand, so <laughs> I couldn't pass up for free agent mm-hmm. but i would sit and sit and wait and see especially if you need uh depth of running back. the only other person i would say is worth talking about might be um old rudolph the red nose tight end or yep. red nose <laughs> red, red zone. zone yeah red, red zone, zone reindeer, reindeer. Yes, that's right, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah he's having a good year right now and yes again it's like when was the last time brett Favre was probably the last time where you were excited about a minnesota qb yeah, definitely. I mean, it's like no one can pass the fucking ball yeah. for years there. And now you got a, a guy who can actually sling it. Look real good last week against the Green Bay. So, yeah, pick him up if you're if you're struggling at tight end and you, you need, need some it. depth. Though. You got a flyer there, yep. yep. Absolutely. And guy, and I would say beyond just a one-week flyer, just a stash and see. Yeah, no, exactly. He could end up having a pretty good year. All right, moving on to Arizona versus Buffalo. Now, you are sitting with Sean McCoy. I am I sitting with McCoy. I want to hear a reason. Now. Well, my, my main reason is I have Melvin Gordon, and I think he and like I'd rather play Melvin Gordon this yeah. week. So, so uh, who are your two other running backs? Uh, I've got Mar- Miller. Miller, yeah, and Lamar then, Miller, yeah. So those are basically my three. I've got yeah. Jeremy Hill too, but those are those are my three yeah. guys I'm probably playing. So I'm going to let McCoy sit. He's playing Arizona. They're, it's a tough. It's run a tough deep. D. Yeah, and I mean, there's not. I mean, Sammy Watkins looks like shit. That offense. Even though they put up points, I don't I don't like them that much. I mean, maybe in a two QB league, you're playing Terrell Pryor or not Terrell Pryor, uh, Tyrod Taylor. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I mean, Buffalo does not look like a very good fantasy play minus good matchups from McCoy right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think Tampa Bay has a better offense, and we saw what happened last week with them. So exactly. I mean, I think Arizona D is a must start versus Buffalo. Yeah, they're, they're going to put up. Absolutely. A, I think they're going to have a huge game. Uh, the wide receivers, Floyd and Fitz, the only really two startable guys right now. Yeah. Um, for the pass catchers for Arizona, and obviously David Johnson, you're starting him. Mm-hmm. Um, not really else much to talk about in that matchup. You probably play Carson Palmer. It's pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty decent matchup. I mean, everybody's done pretty good against the the Bills. Yeah, I mean, you saw Fitz Magic throw over 400 yards against them. Yeah, um, and all of those receivers have a big day. Um, so moving on, we got Denver versus Cincinnati. 
This is going to be one of those ones where I don't think a lot of points come out of it. Yeah, two great defenses going after it. Um, yeah, it's with green, with uh, with Cincinnati Green is the only guy I'm like I'm definitely starting. I mean, yeah, you, you just gotta start. you gotta start him unless he has his kid this week. <laughs> that is true. I did keep hear, an eye on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Actually, this would be the best week for him to have his kid. Like if he had it during, yeah, just because I would say so too. Just because you know, like you're not excited about the match. Yeah, exactly. It would be terrible if like he was going up against Cleveland one. <laughs> I did hear that his wife is at the hospital right now. So, so yeah, definitely keep an eye on that because he said flat out, I'm not going to be there for my kids being born. I'm going to be there for the birth of my child. Yeah. What an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a piece of shit. <laughs> well, the other thing I'm thinking about is uh, I might play Fat G.O.B. here, Gio Bernard. That's not a bad play. Because I think they're going to be behind. Yeah. And they're not going to have shit to do in the, with Jeremy Hill. Yeah, Jeremy fuck gonna Jeremy Hill. He's going to be terrible. So I think they're, they probably... Probably have G- Fat Gob out there for like 65, 70 percent of the snaps, and he might be worth putting in there in your flex. He got 100 receiving yards last week, so that was there very you go. Nice. I mean, shit. Um, and then with Denver, we're starting their defense, obviously, but other than that, I mean, <sighs> CJ Anderson a must start definitely. You know, D- proceed with caution for their wide receivers. Yeah, DT. I've got DT also in our league, and I, I'm sitting him. I've got I've got some other guys who, I, who I'd rather play at receiver. So um, DT is. It's it's a rough one. I mean, Cincinnati's got a good defense, like we said earlier, and um, you know, I don't know. Trevor Simeon just doesn't get the ball out there enough to make DT a must start, yeah. in my opinion. We got we got to wait and see what happens. He still doesn't have a touchdown. He looked a little bit better last week, but yeah, same with Emmanuel Sanders. I just don't think there's enough volume right now to play them. I agree with you. Right now, um, yeah, Demarius Thomas uh, is not looking like what we'd hoped he'd be looking like. Emmanuel Sanders, like you said, the volume just isn't there, and uh, Trevor Simeon just not not the quarterback who we were hoping would would take them to the promised land. Yeah, exactly. Another kind of a snoozer, Seattle versus San Francisco. Not a whole lot of players on this on this game. Uh, yeah. Russell Wilson, obviously, you're starting. Yeah, you're probably yeah yeah he'll start him definitely. But, hopefully he's hopefully he's starting to turn yeah. around. Hopefully that ankle is going to heal up. So. Uh, Tyler Lockett, a uh, question mark right now. Whether not a huge question mark, but him and Doug Baldwin are both question marks. Uh, Especially Doug Baldwin right now, people are questioning whether he'd be able to suit up. Regardless, so if what he, was his injury? I don't even know. I, what it was. You know, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. But uh, if either one of those guys isn't going to be playing, then the other one is definitely. Oh so, hell yeah, yeah. absolutely! Then, you, know, you got an awesome guy. But their running back core, as far as Seattle's concerned, <sighs> Christian Michael or Thomas Rawls or neither. Yeah, I'd say neither. Wait yeah. and see. Pray right. for Rawls, but oof, it's not looking good. It's I mean, it, good. the LA's got a good run D, so yeah. you know, there's that. But man. It's, you know. And then I don't want to play anybody on San Francisco, period. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to. Maybe Jermaine Curse. Hyde, maybe, but. Yeah. I wouldn't play Hyde, though, against that Seattle. Not, yeah, probably not against Seattle. I don't like any of them. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I agree. I'd, I'd avoid the team, too. Yeah, and definitely you're playing Seattle's D. Um, but other than that, Seattle's D, Russell Wilson, really the only two must starts. Um, yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, like I said, keep an eye on the wide receiver core. Uh, I'm going to play Tyler Lockett and just because of the turn yards. But oh, other yeah. than that. All right, Detroit versus Green Bay. This is going to be a good game. Lots yeah. of points. Uh, potential shootout written all over it. Uh, the only person I'm thinking maybe I won't start on Green Bay is Eddie Lacy, just because he has not looked good. But I, mean, I can understand who that. Who else do you have at yeah. this point with all the injuries? If you've got some options and it, you think it's pretty good, I'd go with it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, Eddie Lacy hasn't been terrible. He just hasn't hasn't gotten touchdowns, and he hasn't gotten you know the vast majority of, of the snap. I guess yeah. he has gotten the majority, but not the vast. Majority I think at the of end of the day, I'm playing Eddie Lacy just because I don't have anybody else. Um, and obviously, the Green Bay pass catchers. You're, you're just hoping right now this is just a blip on on the radar. This is not a long term trend that they're going to look so bad. Yeah. Uh, but I again, I'm I'm starting all of them as far as the Detroit side of the ball. Definitely starting all their pass catchers as far as Marvin Jones Jr. and Golden Tate. Yep. Uh, and keep an eye on Dwayne Washington. Yeah. Of course, you are starting Theo Riddick, though. Oh, for Must sure. Start. For yeah. sure. Theo Riddick is like a, I, I'd say, RB2 this week. Definitely, yeah. At least. I mean, with, you know, RB1 potential. Mm-hmm. But uh, I picked up Dwayne Washington to replace Amir Abdullah, who, by the way, has the blackest name in all in all of fantasy football. Because, like, how many white dudes do you know either named Dwayne? And how many white dudes do you know who had last name Washington? Yeah. Other than our first president. There's <laughs> not that many out there. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's like, to me, this black's name. Ever, but. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, theoretic, definitely you're right. A, it's uh, the most uh, black American. Name. Yes, black American. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not African. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, moving on. We got uh, Oakland versus Tennessee, uh, which we think is going to be. I think this is a similar game. It's yeah. not going to be as high powered, but start most of these guys. Uh, got yeah, as far as pass catchers are concerned. Yeah, uh, but even I the think, quarterbacks. I think it's great for Bonanza for the Oakland passing game. Yeah, Amari Cooper, Michael Crabtree. Um, I. I'd be very excited about starting either one of those guys. Uh, yeah. Derek Carr, good flyer. Yeah. And like you said, Marcus Mariota. Yeah. Latavius Murray and DeMarco Murray. Play yeah. both of them. Must must plays this week. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, nothing I'm too worried about. I'm I'm not fond of either one of them's defense. So no, I, I, not at all. Yeah. No, yeah. I, th- I think this is a similar situation. Start just about all your fantasy stars on these teams. Yeah, exactly. Uh, moving on to Los Angeles Rams versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> Ooh, um, well, we got a flyer defense. I feel like with Tampa, yeah. Just because I mean, they're LA not a great sucks. defense, but LA is so bad this year. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, and you got to start guys like Gurley. You got to start. You got I mean, to. Doug Martin starts. So Charles Sims at this point, kind of a must start. Pretty much, yeah. Um, neither one of those defenses are so scary. Even LA, who we thought you know was going to be insane, was like they're not so scary that I'm all that worried about Charles Sims, especially with his pass catching ability. You know, and Winston, I guess, potential flyer. Yeah, I mean, I'm going with Winston probably this week just because I don't want to make space on my roster, dropping other guys, and I think he'll have a bounce-back game. I don't think he's going to do so poorly. This is also in Tampa Bay. So. Yeah, I think he should. I yeah. think you're absolutely right, especially like, four interceptions. Oof. Yeah, exactly. You got it. Uh, and then, obviously, you know, Mike Mike Evans you're starting, but yeah. I, I would lean away from Vincent Jackson. Vincent Jackson. Yeah, probably not. I just because you probably have better like yeah. said, you know, pick up Terrell Pryor Sr. after <laughs> yeah. and hope that he can do better. Um, all right, Pittsburgh versus Philadelphia, the all-Pennsylvania battle. Oh, yeah. West versus East. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so Philadelphia, the big question is Sproles versus Matthews. And we talked about this earlier. I, I think Sproles is the actual answer. I, I Matthews hurt his hand, apparently. Matthews is a little injury-prone bitch. Yeah, he is. So. And, uh um, and they obviously wanted to use Sproles, Sproles in that Monday night game. So many fucking touches, it's 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 almost insane. Like they even used him on the one, which are like, dude, the guy weighs yeah. like, one hundred ninety pounds, five six. <laughs> they gave they gave him that goal line. Yeah, you know, which he try. didn't do shit with. He but. didn't do shit, but he did tear up the field. Like it yeah, literally, I saw that, it like, literally like, pushed like, it up. up a piece of sod. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I'm going with Sproles again because there's return yards in our league. So I think he'll he has a favorable matchup. So uh, overall, though, you know, Matthews is, is the guy in the backfield you want. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, this, this as far as the Philadelphia offense is concerned right now, I mean, there's not too many players you're excited about other than maybe Jordan Matthews. Yeah, Jordan Matthews looks like a decent wide receiver, too, probably this year. Yeah. But, yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it for the Eagles, I'd say. Yeah, as far as Pittsburgh's concerned, you're starting all of them that you yeah. normally start. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess there's some questions like Marcus Wheaton. Sammy Coates and I would mm-hmm. stay away from those guys. As far as your big players, absolutely. And then you got Jesse James as a, as a flyer tight end. And a lot of people have been talking about him, and he's done pretty well. He's getting a good six or seven catches a game. I think he got a touchdown in the first week. It makes you wonder what could have been with Ladarius Green, a healthy Ladarius Green. I know. It would be pretty insane. Or if, like, fucking Martavis Bryant was still fucking around. Yeah, exactly. But obviously he's gone because of smoking weed and <laughs> drinking booze. Yeah. But... We all can't be angels, I suppose. <laughs> all right, then we got the New York Jets versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, big question here is to start Jamal Charles or to sit Jamal Charles. If he even goes, I guess he's still yeah. kind of a game-time decision. Wait and see. If he plays, um, I think you're right in in probably starting where over him Yeah, and just wait and see. But if honestly, if you got some options, if you got a lot of depth, try and avoid the situation. But yeah. That's just Probably that's crazy. Like, I mean, how many how many of these games have we gone through and be like, avoid this backfield? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like there's so many. It's like, I, I can't avoid these backfields because you know I got Frank Gore, who I'm not terribly excited about, and Darren Sproles is like, like <laughs> yeah, it sucks. Oh my god, it's brutal out there. I mean, this is what we come to expect from running backs, and this is why they were so lowly ranked. Exactly. So is this just is this just the prophecy coming coming true? It's starting to look like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say, yeah, probably start where if you got to, um, and then you're going to start Macklin and Kelsey, yeah. and that's probably about it for the yeah, Chiefs. Yeah, exactly, and then it's New York Jets side of the ball. Um, you know, I'm starting I'm starting Decker, I'm starting Marshall, I'm starting Forte. I'm Assuming Marshall him. plays. I think he yeah. should, but... He should play. I mean, he, he came back and played after. He did, him. you're right. And, and did pretty well. Um, Anunua, though. 
He's an interesting play. He's looked good these first two weeks. Especially if Marshall's gone. Like, if you have either Eric Decker or Brandon Marshall and Anumwa's still sitting on the waiver wire, I would pick him up for the, like, best insurance ticket for a wide receiver that's probably left on the waiver wire. I agree. I think uh, the Brandon Marshall owner in our league did the same thing. Yeah, smart, and, smart move. I mean, Anua, you know, he might even be a good play this week. If you if you need a, a flex play and you and you can pick him up or you got him, I'd, I'd probably go with him because the Chiefs have given up a lot of points at, you know, at the receiver position this year. They have. They certainly have. So, I mean, I'd, I'd probably go with it. I could see this being another pretty big game with, with a lot of fantasy points. Yeah, I hope so. Um Moving on, we got San Diego versus Indianapolis, another potential shootout. Oh, yeah. I think this is going to be the biggest game of the week. I, I could see, like, 60 points being scored in this in this game. Yeah, I could be <laughs> Definitely. I think everybody on the Chargers, well, everybody, everybody that isn't everybody broken. Everybody that's injured, <laughs> your name is, you know, fucking Keenan Allen or Danny Woodhead. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, so, okay, let's, let's talk about it then. Travis Benjamin, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Tyrell. Williams, yeah. absolutely. I mean, well, as a fly, he's in my flex, and I'm excited about him above John Brown for sure. Oh yeah. Um, then Melvin Gordon. Melvin Fuck, Gordon. Yeah, he might be RB one. You know, he could be forward. at this point. It's looking like he's got a good shot at it. His first two weeks looked amazing. So. Yeah, they did. I'm, and then yeah, Philip Rivers and maybe a flyer type guy again. And then on the on the uh, Indianapolis side of the ball, obviously you're starting left. You're starting. Oh, yeah. T.Y. Hilton, especially now the Moncrief's gone, you might see enough taking targets. Mm-hmm. Philip Dorsett, you got to start him now. Philip Dorsett, I would be starting him too. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, at least in your wide receiver three position or your flex. What about a uh, what about a guy like Gore? Oh, I'm starting Gore. I, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know who you have at this point above Frank Gore in any sort of format. Yeah. I just don't see. Like, I I can't even imagine like who you would be like sitting like unless you went RB rounds one, two, three, and none of them are injured. You know. Yeah. You start more, right? <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. I hope fucking Turbin doesn't snake anything from him again. Yeah, that would be shitty. He did score a touchdown last week against Denver, which was a um, a good sign. Gore did get a touchdown last week. He did. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. I mean, that's the only thing that saved his value. Otherwise, he would have had like a five point fantasy day. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, Chicago versus Dallas. Well, I think this is going to be a. Uh, more of a muddled game. I'd see a lot of field goals getting kicked in this game, but I think you should probably start your your three main Dallas players and yeah. Dez, Zeke, and uh, Witten right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Tight end is just too thin right now to think about sitting the guy. Um, and then yeah, I mean, I, I'm expecting a breakout performance from Zeke now any week. Yeah. Like it. I mean, last week he had a good game. The week before he's gotten a touchdown every game he's played. Mm-hmm. I would not be surprised if if he busts out a hundred yards for two three TDs. One of these, you know, it's coming, especially against Chicago. They're they, they're looking rough at, at yeah. in, in, on their defense right now. So yeah, and then on the Chicago side of the ball, man, again, like <laughs> it's getting tough. <laughs> Langford is not the bell cow by any stretch of the imagination. Although Kerry got hurt, so that's good for him. That Langford. is good for him. I mean, I'd play him again just because who else are you can throw out there? I, I think he's got to get all just about all the volume. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then obviously you're playing Alshon because obviously. even with kind of a shitty performance, he still ends up scoring you like 97 yards and like six, seven catches. So and Jay Cutler's hurt and not going to play this week, so you got Brian Hoyer passing the ball, but he threw all those balls to fucking Hopkins last it, year. Yeah, exactly. Hoyer's not the worst guy to throw out there. Definitely not. Um, as far as an NFL team is concerned, I mean, obviously you're not starting him, but you know, hey, good, good on him again. Alshon, really the only guy I'm looking at that I'm like I got to start. I got to start him. Yeah, I don't think you're starting him. Zach Miller or Eddie Royal or any of those. And Zach Miller's been Kevin a profound White. disappointment. Yeah, uh, thus far this this year, and uh, yeah, just not not looking good for Chicago. They're going to be one of those fantasy teams where they got like one stud, and then the rest of them are kind of avoiding risk. <laughs> I know. And our final game, our Monday night game. Oh yeah. Atlanta versus New Orleans, which we're all hoping will be what New Orleans versus New York was supposed to be last week. Yeah. And I think this is going to be one of those things every week. We're going to be like, oh, New Orleans game is going to be fucking <laughs> huge. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're probably right. It, w- it will. I mean, the Raiders game was huge. Hopefully it'll happen this way. I mean, Matt Ryan's been lighting it up in these first two weeks, so yeah, hopefully a, it does happen. And, and that's the thing, too. Like, I would love – unfortunately, I really don't own any Saints in most of my leagues except for, like, one. I got Brandon Cooks. But I would love to own more Saints at this point. I love Drew Brees. I love Brandon Cooks. I love Willie Sneed. Uh, even Mark Ingram, I still have faith in. Yeah, just because, like, I think he will. Dude, they're going to be behind a lot. They're going to be throwing the ball a lot. Mark Ingram's mm-hmm. going to get a bunch of passes. Like, I would be, I'd be, I'd be stoked to own more New Orleans players. I agree. I, the only shitbag of the group would be Kobe Fleener. He yeah, he something. has 
prove to be nothing. I would hold on to him for one more week. Yeah. One more week, see if he does another shit bag performance. And if it's a blowout, I mean, if it's a shootout and there is no Kobe Flea interaction, feel free to dump his ass. Yeah. Just be done with him. And this shit point. on his corpse because he's done nothing <laughs> for you. Yeah. No, <laughs> probably I mean, busted like a right. sixth round pick on him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think a lot of people did. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think uh, I think you're right. New Orleans played just about everybody on their side of the ball. Yeah. Um, then Atlanta. I mean, Julio obviously Jones, Julio. Matt Ryan is looking like a must start. It's a good start for Matt Ryan yeah. again this week. I agree. And what about? Old Tevin Coleman and Devontae Freeman. I, I told you before, I think that's a point flip. <laughs> yeah. I think you might as well fucking take a quarter and flip it, and whoever it lands on, that's what you go with. Because yeah. I don't have a whole lot of faith that either one of them is more than a flex play for the rest of the year going forward. That's how I feel. Uh, yeah. Pray one of them gets hurt. I guess if I had to, yeah, exactly. If one of them gets hurt, then you're like, fucking fuck yeah, if yeah. you got the other one. If you got I know other Jeff one, yeah. and Harley, he has both of them, which you almost have to at this point. Yeah, you got to get Because if one gets hurt, then you're like, you got to RB1. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I guess if I had to make a choice, I'm going with Devontae Freeman. Just because I, probably I think they might, might throw the ball more. But again, like I said, that's not even a short thing anymore. Yeah, Coleman, Coleman. I think Coleman caught a TD pass last week. Yeah, so who the fuck are you going to go with? Yeah, exactly. But it should be a good game. Play anybody you got in it for the most part. Julio, yeah. would you play Sanu? Ooh, no, I don't think I don't think I'd end up playing Sanu just because I think wide receiver right now there's a there's a good amount of depth with guys like Tyrell Williams, Terrell Pryor, uh, Will Fuller, guys that you weren't really expecting at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, on the other opposite side, on running back, you know, you probably are playing Coleman or Freeman. Yeah. Maybe even in your two slot just because you don't got shit else. Probably. Yeah. So. What about a flyer on old uh, Jacob Tammy? Yes. More so than Kobe Fleener. Like, if I had to make a choice right now, I would start Tammy over Fleener. I would, too. Yeah. Exactly. For sure. Uh, just because Jacob Tammy has shown you to, he's he's capable of putting up points this year, whereas Fleener has shown you that he's capable of not even running routes correctly. Yeah. <laughs> and Tammy's gotten, I'm pr- I think he got 10 and 8 targets in the first two games. So, pretty good. Good yeah. volume. Especially for tight end. That is. I mean, that wraps up uh, the previews. Um so we're gonna we're gonna try to do this every week where we give you our uh, week weekly previews and go through every matchup. We're gonna try to do it uh, with a little bit of speed, like some uh, mm-hmm. unlike some of these other podcasts, which like <laughs> ramble on for hours at a time, not <laughs> yeah. talking about the things they're supposed to be talking about. But we can get you all these under forty five minutes usually. And that's what we're trying to do here at the Pickle Bear Fantasy Football Podcast. Most definitely. We had to take a little break because we had a microphone issue, but uh we're back and we should be uh regularly put regularly putting content out again. Yeah, here at the uh, beautiful Pickle Barrel uh, <laughs> Studios, <Yeah. laughs> which oh, consists yeah. of a few uh, couch cushions and some blankets thrown up on the wall. <laughs> a laptop and a microphone. <laughs> yeah, by the way, our audio is great for what we fucking have. So oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All, right. Yeah. All right, guys, follow us, on, follow us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, do all those things that you should be doing, and uh, we'll get you that content out there with some more regularity, we promise. Uh, signing off... I'm Andy. I'm Frank. You guys enjoy yourselves. Football's finally upon us.